In this segment, we're going to cover client statements and payment entry in the system. Now, I'm going to go to Collections and Statements tab at the top of the screen here. Choose Process Client Statements. And here, there are some filters I can apply at the top here. Um, set your date range, your, your option boxes here as you want them to be. And then filter. And I'm going to do clients with balances and no invoiced activity in the last 30 days. And this filter is especially useful in that if I'm using the mini statement feature on my invoices automatically so that anybody who has a previous balance gets that mini statement aging information on their invoice. I don't really need to send them a statement because they already know that from their invoice if they've gotten an invoice from me. So this is only going to generate statements for clients that have balances and haven't had an invoice in the last 30 days. Now, from the list here, I can further choose to narrow that down if I choose to. I'm going to select just one to show you how it prints. Now, too, you do have some options here. Uh, too, you can include a payment stub on the um, statement if you choose to, like we do on our invoices. Also here you can have a note that will appear on the invoice here and you can edit this text of course. Now I'm going to preview that and now I'm not going to send it directly to the printer. And this is what my statement is going to look like now. And again, you do have quite a few options on how things are displayed, and you can see here I'm including the remittance stub at the bottom. But the filters there are a key thing to remember on that. Now, too, I'm going to close that screen. Also, from this collections and statements screen, you can run an aging report. And I am going to use 1231.05 for my aging here so everything won't be over 90. And again, now this can be filtered by billing partner. Uh, you know, quite a few options you have on how you filter and how you want things to do, be displayed here. I am going to show my contact person. And preview. And now this is actually a working preview of this report. Here I can see my totals for each client. And you'll notice here that the client name is underlined. So if I see something that I have a question about here, I can just click on the client name. It'll open up that invoice and payment history screen so I can go right in, pull information from it, look at it, review it to make sure I'm satisfied with what I'm seeing on my aging report. Now, Two, I'm going to come back to here. I'm going to choose the report tab at the top and choose print preview. Now this is what the actual printed report is going to look like. Let me make that a little bit. Okay. And we get it spaced up a little bit better here so we can see it all. Now, what I've got here is the client name, their contact number. I did set it to show my contact person if I have one filled in on the client setup screen. Their last payment Amount, date and amount. Here is the aging information, any unapplied credits in the system, and their AR balance. Goes through each client. Now, too, at the bottom of this report, we do get grand totals by column, and two, we list out the percentage of total outstanding each of the outstanding columns represents. So not only is this a good aging report, but it can become a good collection tool too since you do have the contact information there for your clients, along with last payment date and amount too. That's our aging report. Now too, you can actually show detail by invoice on that if you choose to. And now it lists out each invoice and gives the aging information on that. So whatever your preference is there for the display of that. But now we've gotten our statements out the door, we've reviewed our aging report, and now hopefully the mail comes in we have some payments in the mail. I can come to Collections and Statements, Payment Posting, 
Now here I can actually look up a client by name, by ID, or by invoice number. And I'm going to pull up all the glitters. Is it gold? Ain't gold, I should say. Excuse me. Current AR is 592.50. At the bottom of the screen, I can see a list of their unpaid invoices in the system, the original amount, and the outstanding balance of each one. In the center here, I enter their payment information. Now, I will mention too, as I mentioned earlier, we do offer credit card processing through our system. If you're set up for that, I can choose CC Online for credit card online. And that will, and of course, in my demo here, I'm going to get an error message there because I'm not set up. But here you can see that actually exposes the fields for me to fill in the credit card information. I can hit the Process Charge button. I'll get an on-screen pop-up that says Approved or Declined and then it will ask me to apply it toward payments if it's approved. So you can process credit card payments and ACH check, uh, electronic check payments right from here as well. But let's do a check here. Let's say we got check one, two, three in, and that was a check, and let's say that the amount on that was $500. And now it's gonna ask me here if I would like to auto apply and post the payment to invoices. The way I have my auto apply set up here, I've got it set for a direct dollar match first. If there's no direct dollar match, then I'll just invoice first. So if I say yes, since there is no $500 invoice there, it'll start applying it with the oldest invoice. Now, if I say no, maybe the client sent that check with notation on it to us of support, excuse me, apply it towards specific invoices. I can manually fill in the two apply boxes here. And actually here it will show me the total allocated and left to apply as I fill in the amounts for each one too. But I'm gonna say yes and let it automatically take care of it. Now, one of my 275 invoices now has a zero balance. The other now has a $50 balance. And I just pull up my next client and I'm ready to enter my next payment online or payment there. Now, to, I will mention here, you enter a payment, you realize you made a mistake on that, you can scroll back through the payments right here. And like that payment, I can select it, unpost it, which will bring back all my balances. And at that point, I could actually delete it and apply it to a different client if I realized I entered it for the wrong client, that type of thing. But it is very versatile, and as with most things in our system, we will let you back out of most anything in the system. Uh, as a general rule through the system, if it's something you keep back out of, we're going to warn you at least once and even twice on some things. But that is the payment entry right there.